hey what is going on guys welcome back to another video and today we're gonna talk about serverless functions and specifically virtual serverless functions so i was looking at the serverless ecosystem and i was a bit intrigued by how things work so i wanted to build a small project just to experience the serverless architecture and uh, so i did i created a small project called discover stack which is basically a hacker news or Substack. This is work in progress. I just wanted to make a quick video on my experience using virtual serverless functions. So let's just start off with like a very brief overview of what serverless is. So basically, if you are building a REST API, you have a client and you have the server. So the server is hosted somewhere in like DigitalOcean or AWS. And if you are doing it in JavaScript, then probably you have a server running in Node.js. Or if you are doing in something like uh, Golang, then I have a server here uh, which uses Jin. Uh, and so this is written in Golang and as you can see here you have a router which then accepts request at all of these routes so a get request at status a post request at email and what this essentially is is that you are trying to execute a function on the server from the client so it is more or less like an RPC that is a remote procedure call so this is the basic idea that uh, you are basically trying to run a function uh, on on a different computer. So so in serverless, this is basically the idea. You're trying to run a function on the on the server. So just as a function takes in arguments and gives out response, in the same way, uh, serverless functions take in request as the input and response as the output. That's just a brief overview of serverless. Uh, this isn't a deep dive. If you want to understand more about serverless and how does that work, then uh, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube. I'd highly recommend you go ahead and watch them. So now let's take a look at the project structure because I think this is the most important part because when I started building this project, I was a bit confused on how should I structure my app. And I think this is my way of structuring it. I don't know whether this is a standard or there is, is this a right way of doing it, but I think this works pretty good. So as you can see, this is a project structure, which is very identical to what you get when you create a react app. And that's because I have created this app using CRA. And then I just added two folders, API and lips. So the API folder is super important when it comes to serverless functions uh, and specifically Versal, because when you upload the when you upload the project to Versal, Versal looks into the API folder and whatever is exported from these files is treated as a serverless function. So you need to have a folder called API in your in your directory. Otherwise, Versal won't understand it. And there is another folder called libs. So this is a collection of functions uh, which are used across these three uh, serverless functions. So that's the overview of the project structure. Rest of it is just same as CRA, nothing, nothing special. So now let's just take a look at one of the serverless function. So this is the post serverless function. So as you can see, I've used module.exports. So this has to export a function and here you can use the async keyword as well. So you can use await inside of the uh, serverless function. So here, what I'm doing is I'm getting a connection to the database. I'm picking up the posts collection and I'm just retrieving things from the post collection. And if you look closely, you'll see some weird thing here. So I have, I have a branching based on the method of the request. So if the method is of type get, I just return all the posts uh, that are in my database. And if the request is of type post, then I add the post into my database. And this is because Versal has a limit to number of serverless functions that you can deploy, at least for the hobby tier, it's 12. I didn't want to create multiple functions to get posts and to put posts into the database because you would easily run out of functions very quickly that way. Uh, this is something that I saw on the internet. This is not what I came up with. So, but this is a pretty nifty trick and rest of it is pretty simple, straightforward. You just have a function which add posts and uh, you have a function which is get posts. So this is one of the serverless functions. I have a couple of others. And then uh, I just want to also talk about libs, which is a collection of functions divided into files depending upon the responsibility and which are used across these three serverless functions. You can extract our common utilities into their separate functions and Versal will identify that, hey, uh, this particular thing requests something from utils. So this, this particular serverless function requires the utils from libs. So it will make sure that this is available when this function runs. One more thing that I want to point out was uh, you just have one package.json. This one was created when I created the react app 
So there are no package.json for each of those serverless functions. This is again a cool thing about Oversell. So if you install a library, which is used by the serverless function, it will fall under the same package.json, but uh, Oversell will identify that this is used in the serverless function and it will make it available. So for example, the bcrypt.js, the mongodb, the json web token. So these are all libraries which aren't used in the front end, but used in the serverless function. So Oversell is smart enough to identify that and uh, make that available in, in the environment. So that is again, really, really cool thing that i found uh, about versal uh, now let's just quickly talk about what i uh, liked about i think we talked about a couple of things but i just want to go over a list that i have uh, one thing that i liked about is you just have one single code base uh, and i know uh, once the project kind of starts growing this can be uh, a pain in the air but as long as the project is something that you but as long as the project is small, uh, I think this is this is a plus point. Just having one single code base. So since I have the functions written in JavaScript and also the front end is in JavaScript, I can kind of utilize the same functions in the FE and B. So for example, if I write a validator here, I can use the same validator in 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 here as well as in my React code. So again, uh, that is also pretty cool. And and the third thing was deploying is super simple. So if you are familiar with uh, deploying things to AWS and uh, DigitalOcean, it, it's not pretty straightforward. It requires uh, some configuration, but with serverless functions in general, the deploying is super simple. With Versal, it is just one command away. You just say Versal hyphen hyphen prod, and it just takes care of deploying everything for you. So that's pretty cool. And that brings me to the last uh, thing that I like, and that's the Versal CLI. The Versal CLI is still in beta, so it doesn't have a lot of things, but from what it has right now, I think uh, this is also pretty cool. So for example, if you change a code in the serverless function, you don't have to restart the server. You can just save this and it will change uh, automatically. Uh, like every coin has two sides. I also have a couple of things that I kind of don't like about this. Uh, one was basically there is no debugging for the serverless function. So you cannot add breakpoints uh, in here. Uh, and that's, I think, a limitation of the Versal CLI. And I think they are working on this. I'd also like to mention a couple of things that you might want to take into consideration when you are creating your first serverless application. First is basically caching database connections. Uh, so this function connect to a database. Uh, so if you keep this connection and if you forget to close the connection, then you are going to run out of connections pretty quickly. So Versal recommends you to cache those collection. Uh, so cache those connections. But so far, I haven't been able to do that. Uh, what they suggest is saving the connection in a global object. What I found out is that in every execution of the function, the global object is reset. So I'm not able to get the cached copy of the collect of the of the database connection. So if any of you guys know how to get around that, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, the other thing is you don't have control over the server. If you want to fine tune things, you cannot. Or if you want to tune things according to the requirement of your application, you cannot. But again, uh, this is a trade off. You you are trading off convenience to uh, uh, to control. Other thing that I was pretty much tempted to do was to install Express on top of this, but it, it's kind of an anti pattern because Express is a framework which helps you to write servers, but a serverless function is just one endpoint of, of a server if you think about it. So uh, it would be an anti pattern to use Express in, in a in a serverless function. So just before we wrap up, I just wanted to show this project that I built. So this is 100% serverless. The fetching of the posts is done via serverless function. There is a submit button where you can submit your post. One thing that I also wanted to point out was basically the location of your the location of your serverless functions and the database. So it would be better to kind of have those two deployed in the same region. If they are not, then there will be a latency. So for example, in my serverless function here my serverless function is deployed in north america and my database is in singapore that's why you see a lot of time is taken to return the results i think that's going to be it for this video i know this was a bit longer than my usual videos but uh, I'm, I'm trying different things and i'll keep posting these videos uh, if you want a more deeper dive into this do let me know i'll, I'll make that happen and yeah uh like share subscribe guys Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.